today I'm going to introduce you to the wonderful world of slip dresses. Hello and welcome back to the Essentials Club. If you are new around here, I am Maddie, and as you just saw today, I am going to show you how to make your own beautiful and custom slip dress. Personally, I like to call these the potato of the DIY fashion world because as a potato can be made in many, many different ways, so too can a slip dress. You can make a nice casual one to wear with your Sunday morning hash brown, or you can make one that you can dress up and wear out to have with your Noki at night. The possibilities really are endless in all the details that we can add to a slip dress to make it suit our style, suit our body, suit kind of the occasion we want to wear it to. And they're also just a really simple easy make and I always recommend them as a perfect intro if you are just beginning or even if you are well into your sewing journey. You can keep leveling it up each time you make one as well. As you may have noticed before, I have shared a mini style slip dress tutorial and in that one it shows how to do a front leg split, some tie up straps and it's got a mirrored front and back. And the difference with today's one is it's going to have some regular straps, it's got a lower back feature and then some extended side splits and again at each stage there are options to change it up but generally this is the gist that I will be showing you today and as always if you do want to follow along these are the essentials that you'll need to make your own beautiful slip dress. Some fabric I would suggest something nice and lightweight something like a cotton or a linen is always a great option I actually got this fabric from an op shop I have no idea what it exactly is but it kind of looks like a woven linen and it only cost me like two dollars or something. As always I will put the amount that you need per size and style in the below description of the video so once you've got that material, you'll then need a measuring tape, some fabric chalk, you also need some matching thread to your material, some pins, fabric scissors, a clean paintbrush or something long to help us push out the straps when we get to that stage. And then of course you'll need your trusty old sewing machine. For step one, we are going to find out all the key measurements to help us figure out what panels we need to cut out for the front, the back, the interfacing, and as well as the straps. So grab your measuring tape and wrap it around your widest point. If you don't know what that is, I find if you just wrap it around and kind of shimmy it up and down, you'll kind of find which point ends up being tighter. For me, that is my hip area. So once I found that, I kind of loosely wrap it around there, find that measurement, and then we add six inches onto that. And that is enough for seam allowance, as well as just an extra little amount to get it to that slip looser fit so we can just throw it on. Once you have found that widest point added six inches we then halve that amount and that is going to be our cutting width for one panel. So write that down as a reference for later and then we need to figure out the length of the dress. Ideally figure out where you want this dress to sit at the top section. For me I always feel like mid chest is a good area so I started my measuring tape there and then measured down to where I wanted it to stop. If you're like me and you are measuring yourself make sure that when you bend over you hold the measuring tape in place so it doesn't move around and then you get the wrong measurement. Again this is where you can figure out if you want a mini style, a midi style and measure to that point and then we'll add two inches for seam allowance. Write that down as a reference measurement and that is our length length and width all figured out for our front and back panels. Next we need to figure out our straps. So again grab our measuring tape and start it kind of in line with where we started the dress as that will be the point where the straps meet the dress and throw it over your shoulders and go back down to where you want it to be. Now this is kind of where you can figure out how low you want it to go or if you're unsure just add an extra seam allowance as we can always take it away. So once you've found that point we'll add two inches of seam allowance and that will be our cutting length of the strap. Then for our width of the strap I went for quite a thicker style with this as I normally go with a thinner one so I thought I would change it up and whatever the final width you want it to be we're then going to double that amount and then add an inch for seam allowance. So for example I wanted this to be about an inch and a half wide and then doubled that to get to three inches and added an inch for seam allowance so my cutting width was four inches. Then we need to find two more key measurements just to help us figure out this underarm angle section. Again grab your measuring tape and we're just going to measure the width of what we would like the outer edges of the straps to be or the point before it starts angling down. If you've got a bra strap on or if you've got a singlet or something on as a reference point you could use that otherwise I find about 8 to 10 inches seems to be the general width that people choose for this. Write that down as a reference and then we need to figure out how far we would like this arm section to dip down. For me I went for quite a large one and mine ended up being 5 inches. If say you wanted it to be a bit more conservative maybe 2 to 3 inches would be a good amount. If you're unsure we will just grab the measuring tape and kind of again find that line point where we measured in front and put that underneath our armpit. 
and then measure it down how far you would like it to go. If you're wearing a bra and you know you want this dress to cover your bra area, measure to just above that or if you're like me and you're just kind of going to wear it on its own, measure down to where it feels comfortable for you. Once you have figured that out, write that down as a reference point. Now that we have those key measurements, it is time to lay out our material and start cutting out all the panels. That width and length that we figured out for the main panels, start marking that out on the material. I would suggest maybe starting in one corner of the material and working your way across, that way we have less waste. So once you have plotted out that length and width for the first rectangle, you can cut that out. You can then either use this first one as a template and trim a second one from that, or again, just use those measurements that we found to plot out the rectangle and cut that second rectangle. And that will be our front and back pieces all ready to go. Next, we're going to cut out the angle on this front section. So if you have a preference for which of those pieces you would like to be the front, we're going to focus on that first. We're then going to fold it in half. So that helps us find the center point of this dress, making sure that this angled section is all nice and simple. Symmetrical. So once you have it folded, we are going to start at that top corner where the fold is and measure out half that width that we figured this out because as it's on the fold now, we only need to measure half of it. So my width ended up being nine inches. So my point that I plot out from the center is going to be 4.5 inches. Find half of your width from the center point and put a mark there. Then that measurement we found for the dip, we are going to go to the outer edge and measure down that amount. For me, that was five inches. So again, I put a point at five inches down from the corner and now I should have two marks that I can draw a line between and trim that section off. And that will end up being the underarm section. Now this comes down to personal preference. If you want to do the lower straight back, you then just leave the back side as normal. Or if you do want to do a mirrored front and back section, you would then repeat the process for that angle for the back section totally up to you. We then need to create some interfacing and the benefit of interfacing is that it just creates a double layer which obviously helps prevent it from going see-through but then also just creates a nice cleaner finish around here so we don't see any sewing lines and all we do is just replicate the top part of the dress panels that we already have. So obviously for the back section it is a straight section so we'll just cut one at a similar width and just about four to five inches long and that would be the interfacing for the back section done and then we will then just lay out our leftover material and lay down the top half of this panel with the angles on it on top of that making sure we leave about two to three inches on that side edge or at least going down to our waist and then cut out a replicated piece of these angles and that is the interfacing done for the front side then to cut out the strap sections we obviously describe the length and the widths that we figured out for that and cut out two pieces for the straps so we should have the front and back main panels, the matching interfacing for those, and then the two straps. And now that the boring part of cutting out and measuring everything is done, we can now jump into the phase of bringing this dress to life. We're going to focus on the straps first. So lay them down and fold them with the good sides facing, pin this in place, and we will sew one short end, one long end, and then leave the other short end open. And once we have both of those lines sewed in place, we then grab our paintbrush or something nice and long and thin, and we place that on the closed end, ready to push the good sides out. Now the thinner your strap is, the harder this will be because it's obviously a tighter section to push it out through. For me, mine was nice and wide so it made it a lot easier. Essentially you just kind of like shimmy the fabric open a little bit and just begin to push it out until it reaches the other end. It doesn't matter that one of the ends is left raw because both ends will end up getting hidden in the seams. That was a nice easy step. So now we move on to starting to sandwich the straps into the main panel and the interfacing of the garment. So lay your front main panel with the good sides facing up and then grab Grab your straps and we were going to lay that down so the top edges match the corners that we created where the angles start and just a little side note obviously we have some seams in these straps so just make sure as a little aesthetic detail that you have them facing the same way so for me my seams were both facing outwards on the straps not a big deal, but it's just a little detail to keep in mind. And when we lay down these straps, majority of the strap will be on the material of the dress. So I know that might look a bit weird, but it'll all make sense later. So lay that down, match up those corners, and then we lay the matching interfacing on top of that, making sure that the good sides of that are facing the good sides of the main material. Once you have all those edges nice and aligned, you can then pin that in place so it's all nice and secure. And we are going to sew three edges. That is one top angle the one straight edge and then the other underarm angle, making sure that we leave the side edges and don't sew them at all.
Once we have done that for the front side, we then repeat that for the back section, but obviously now the straps are joined to the front edge, so it can be a bit overwhelming and a lot of fabric going on in this section. Again, lay down the main back panel with the good sides facing up. We'll then lay the straps down. If you're like me and we are doing the straight back, we obviously don't have the angles to help guide us where to place it. So you can still use that measurement. Mine was nine inches. I actually put it in just a little bit. So I ended up putting the outer edges of mine about eight inches apart. And you can do that just by finding the center point, measuring out half of that, plotting the strap there, measuring out half again and putting the strap there. Once you're happy with the placement of your strap, again, just place your back interfacing on top of there, making sure that the good sides are facing the pin that all in place and just sew one straight line across that top. If you are unsure about the length of your straps, you might want to try it on while it's just pinned in place. If there are any adjustments needed to be made, you can make it now just by pulling the straps tighter or looser if need be. I ended up having to pull mine a little bit tighter. So once you are happy with the placements of your strap you can then sew that line all closed you can now reveal the good sides of the front and the back if you're happy with how that's generally looking i would suggest flipping up so you see where we've just sewn and go back around there either with an overlocker or a zigzag stitch just to make sure that all of the edges are nice and secure and they're not going to fray so now we are up to joining the two side seams i would suggest trying it on inside out and pinning in these next key places that way the pins are in the right way and all you have to do is simply sew from there Obviously we cut them out as very big wide rectangles and our bodies are generally not just rectangles We have curves and whatnot that we need to work around So what I find is if you kind of start from the top pull it to make sure that the top edges are matching and that it fits Your body nice and snug you probably don't want it too tight. But you don't want it too loose It might involve raising the back section up to meet wherever this point is as that back section is straight And this is an angle and we need those points to meet So there was a bit of lifting up that I had to do to get it to there once I am then happy with the placement of that I popped a pin there and then down to my hip area and made sure that I was allowing enough room for it to go out to my widest point I put a pin there and then I also put a pin where I wanted the split to start for this one I wanted quite an exaggerated split I went about mid thigh so again personal preference wherever you want this split to start or even you don't have to have a split I just find it it kind of makes it flow a bit nicer when you're walking just even having a small split pop the final pin at the point where you want the split to start and those will be our three main in indicators of where we are going to draw, pin, and sew. If you do find that it is a bit hard to get off, you can always just pin one side, get out the other side, and then just copy those measurements on the other edge. I then grabbed some fabric chalk and drew a line from that top pin to my hip pin and then down to my split pin and that is kind of going to be my indicated sewing line. I added some more pins in there and then I just sewed that line down there. One final try on, I did find that it was a little bit baggy around my waist area as I have a smaller waist than I do my hips and noted how much I needed to take in there and made it a bit more of a curve to match my body. So once you have got that all fitting well and you are happy, we then have to do one more step which is hemming the bottom edges. There might be a bit of a difference of length in the front and the back just as we may have adjusted the placement of things. So make sure that that's all aligning as well before you do the hemming process. So we obviously have the very bottom edge and then we have the split edges. So so what I did is I went around each of these edges and I did a double fold. If you're a beginner and you feel it would be easy just to do one fold at a time, go for that. That's perfectly fine. So you just do one fold about a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter. Sew that in place. And again, you can do this in stages. You can just do the bottom section first and then you can do the split section. And then you fold the second one, which again would be about a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter and sew that in place. And just by doing the double folded hem, that prevents it from fraying. So when you get up to the split section, just make sure that they're folding away from each other and just use the method where you put the pin down, turn the material, go across the split, do the corner turning process again, and just keep sewing around that bottom hem section until you are done. And now you should have a slip dress all done and ready to prance around on whatever occasion you wish to. Like I mentioned, it is just such a versatile number to have in any wardrobe. Super fun to style in all the varying ways, layering it up with pieces underneath, putting jackets over the top, wearing it on its own. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it all made sense. If you did follow along, don't forget to tag me at the essentials club on instagram as i always love seeing your outcomes and as well give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you do want to see more tutorials as i've got plenty more in the works thanks so much for tuning in and wherever you are i hope you have a lovely day and i will see you guys in the upcoming videos